Hello, in this video I'll be talking about what influences the length of telomeres, specifically what speeds up telomere shortening, what slows down telomere shortening, and how telomeres can grow back. In fact, this is the part 3 of my telomere video series. The length of our telomeres play a significant role in our aging. The rate at which telomeres shorten may indicate a person's rate of aging. If you can slow down, stop, or even reverse the shortening of our chromosome's telomeres, it may be possible to extend our projected range of expected life. So, we need to identify three things. What speeds up the shortening of telomeres? What slows down or stops telomere shortening? And what lengthens our telomeres? So, the first question is, what speeds up the rate at which telomeres become shorter? If you can answer this question and figure out the factors that shorten telomere length quicker, then by avoiding those factors, we may be able to achieve some level of life extension. So, well, let's first consider one factor that speeds up the shortening of telomeres is free radical exposure. Free radicals can cause damage to cellular, cellular DNA thereby leading to senescence and apoptosis or programmed cell death. Note that oxidative stress means the stress that results from aerobic metabolism like aerobic respiration that produces free radicals from the use of oxygen molecules, for example the electron transport chain that is responsible for the transferring electrons can leak elec uh, electrons to oxygen molecules generating superoxide free radicals and other free radicals that can lead to cellular damage from those free radical species reacting with neighboring cells. Oxidative stress is also a result of inflammation, where white blood cells release free radical species to destroy foreign invaders. So in the case of telomeres, they are highly sensitive and easily damaged by oxidative stress due to telomeres having a high makeup of guanine nucleobases. Guanine has a high oxidative potential compared to other nucleobases. Additionally, damage to a cell's uh, nucleobases accumulates over time, which contributes significantly to cellular dysfunction, mutation, and senescence. Furthermore, oxygen free radicals, uh, especially hydroxyl radicals, uh, produce single-strand breaks in DNA. Although genomic DNA has uh, repair mechanisms for single-strand breaks, telomere DNA is observed by scientists not to have any single-strand break uh, repair mechanisms. Furthermore, repairing lesions on telomere DNA caused by reactive oxygen species is inefficient compared to the rest of the genome. So, what's a possible reason why increased free radical exposure leads to shorter telomeres? Well, consider that free radicals speed up the rate at which cells are lost in the body, which means that the remaining cells that survive are encouraged to replicate faster to, repl to replace the lost cells. And because telomeres are slightly shortened every time a somatic cell divides, increasing the rate of cell division increases the rate at which telomeres become smaller. So we have established that generally anything that increases oxidative stress increases the rate at which telomeres are shortened on our chromosomes. For example, this includes high levels of psychological stress, smoking tobacco and inhaling smoke in general, exposure to harsh sunlight, obesity, a sedentary lifestyle, and sleep deprivation. So let's first talk about stress. You'll notice that people who experience high levels of stress or suffer PTSD can show uh, signs of aging faster, like developing more wrinkles and having their hair gray prematurely. Additionally, chronic stress and high levels of cortisol exposure decreases the body's supply of telomerase. Telomerase is an enzyme that re can re-lengthen telomeres. Generally speaking, uh, chronic uh, psychological stress speeds up the rate at which a person's telomeres are shortened by increasing the, uh, the level of persistent inflammation in the person and thereby increasing oxidative stress. As I've mentioned, oxidative, oxidative stress damages cells and increases the demand of cell replication to replace the lost cells. Let me also quickly mention a thing or two about sunlight. For sunlight, you'll notice that a, skin, uh, that a person's skin ages faster when exposed to lots of harsh sunlight. 
This is especially true for Caucasians who do not tan as easily as tanning is actually a protective mechanism in our skin, where the amount of dark pigment called melanin increases in the skin as a means to protect against free radical damage by blocking UV rays. That's why you'll notice that a lot of African natives have darker skin tones as an adaptive measure to protect against the high sunlight exposure, whereas Caucasians have lighter skin tones because they are exposed to lower levels of sunlight. One thing you should keep in mind is not to expose yourself to the sun during the zenith of the sun and a little while before and after. This is the time period when the sunlight is at its harshest and has the highest probability to damage our skin cells DNA. Of course, I'm not saying not to expose yourself to the sun at all. We do need some level of UVB uh, sunlight exposure on our skin in order to manufacture vitamin D. In fact, having sufficient levels of vitamin D in the body lowers the level of chronic systemic inflammation, reduces oxi- uh, thereby reducing oxidative stress, and, there- and thereby re- um, slowing the rate at which telomeres are shortened. So, let me now talk about uh, um, obesity. So, what does obesity have to do with oxidative stress? At a glance, obesity is a major cause of morbidity and mortality. Obesity uh, can cause metabolic syndrome, diabetes mellitus, cardiovascular disease, fatty liver disease, and cancer. So as you can see, obesity isn't only a matter of having too much energy reserves in the form of adipose tissue. Adipose tissue also acts as an active endocrine uh, organ or a uh, hormone-secreting organ, releasing its own cell-signaling molecules known as adipokines or adipocytokines. The problem is that when there are too many of these adipokine molecules uh, circulating in the body, it results in a low-grade level of chronic inflammation that increases the amount of oxidative stress the body experiences. Generally speaking, uh, the increase in oxidative stress does not disappear until the adipose tissue producing the extra adipokines disappear, meaning that the increase in oxidative stress is uh, semi-permanent until the person loses the extra uh, body fat that makes him obese in the first place. So let's now talk about what slows down telomere shortening. One possible way to slow down a telomere shortening is through caloric restriction. And I'll, this is an interesting way to extend lifespan. Um, eating less or restricting the number of calories that you eat has a twofold effect. First, metabolism may be slow to some extent, such that the rate of cell divisions is lowered. Fewer cell divisions means that the telomeres are shortened at a slower pace. The other effect of caloric restriction is that the amount of adipose tissue or fat in the body decreases. Less fat means that there are less inflammatory cytokines uh, released by the adipose tissue. On the other hand, an obese person has too much adipose tissue and subsequently high levels of inflammatory adipokines. Having more adipokines is inflammatory because it tells the immune system to uh, overactivate, leading to white blood cells releasing more free radicals to kill foreign invaders and pathogens and pathogens that may not necessarily be there. And again, so reducing the amount of adipose tissue you have through fasting or caloric restriction is one way to solve this problem. Let me also now talk about antioxidants. So we all, so we understand that exposure to free radicals or reactive oxygen spe- uh, species is something that can lead to shorter telomeres in our cro- uh, cells' chromosomes. One way to reduce this negative effect of ROS or reactive oxygen species exposure is by lowering the level of cro- systemic chronic inflammation that may be present in the body. Another way to reduce the negative effects of reactive oxygen species exposure is by preventing reactive oxygen species from reacting with our cellular machinery with free radical scavengers, also known as antioxidants. Antioxidants are the molecules that defend us from oxidative stress toxicity by preventing the oxidation of other molecules that make up our cells. Oxidation is a chemical reaction that produces free radicals as a byproduct. Uh, Free radicals are atoms, molecules or ions that have unpaired valence electrons because these electrons are unpaired, uh, unpaired and want to reach a balanced state. Free radicals are highly um, chemically reactive. 
of free radicals left to its own devices lead to chain reactions that may damage cells by reacting with them. Antioxidants such as uh, thiols, vitamin C and E, and, um, and many others stop the um, reactive, uh, reactive oxygen species chain reaction by acting as an electron acceptor to react with uh, in place of the cellular machinery, thereby preventing the reactive oxygen species from reacting with anything else. Finally, I want to talk about what makes telomeres grow longer as perhaps another option for life extension, extension from the cellular level. One way that the body replenishes itself with uh, long telomere cells is through the introduction of stem cells to different parts of the body. Another way is by literally growing the telomeres back from its shortened state with the help of an enzyme called telomerase. And so there is a mechanism that exists in some cells for growing back the length of chromosome telomeres and thereby extending the cell's lifespan. Specifically, there is an enzyme called telomerase, and other, uh, aka telomerase reverse uh, transcriptase, that reverses telomere shortening by adding back the TTAGGG uh, genetic sequence to the telomere. But the cell life extending telomerase enzyme isn't avail available ubiquitously. Uh, telomerase, telomerase can be found present in the germline, the hematopoietic uh, cells, stem cells, and some other rapidly dividing cells. But telomerase presence is extremely low or absent in most normal somatic cells. That means that most of the cells in our body do not utilize telomerase meaning that the telomeres of the somatic cells usually, normally, progressively becomes shorter. And usually when a somatic cell's telomeres becomes too short, they either um, undergo apoptosis or, or uh, senescence. But when the signals for apoptosis and senescence are absent, the somatic cell continues to divide, this leads to extremely shortened telomeres and increased genomic, uh, genomic instability. If the cell continues to survive with extremely short telomeres, then the cell experiences an activation of the telomere maintenance mechanism, which is either ALT or alternate, alternative lengthening of telomeres or telomerase. But the risk is that the cell may become cancerous you'll notice that the cancer cells have very short but stable telomeres because they were once somatic cells that divided away too many times and their telomeres are stabilized by either ALT or telomerase. So this leads me to my next point. There are other cells that activate uh, telomerase to maintain telomere length, namely cancer cells and, Im and immortalized cells. However, there is a group of cancer or immortalized cells that lack the telomerase enzyme, so they maintain telomere length through a different um, mechanism that involves genetic re recombination. Specifically, the genes from one telomere is copied to another telomere, and again, this is known as alternative lengthening of the telomeres, ALT, through homologous recombination. So that means another method that can be investigated by scientists for extending cell life through telomere, uh, telomere extension is ALT. Note that telomerase acts both as a risk factor and preventative for cancer. I already mentioned that telomerase is what allows uh, cancer cells to replicate indefinitely, but telomerase is a preventative for cancer by helping to prevent telomeres from becoming so short that their genome becomes unstable and prone to cancerous uh, mutations. Finally, I want to talk a bit about the absence of telomerase and its negative consequence. When scientists engineered mice to completely lack the telomerase enzyme, their telomeres progressively shortened over several generations. The scientists observed that these mice aged at a faster rate than normal mice Telomerase absent mice were barely fertile and suffered from age-related conditions such as osteoporosis, diabetes, and neurogenesis, and they died, also died young. According to these observations, one may conclude that telomerase is a key player in extending the life of our cells and thereby our own lives. 
Some scientists hypothesize that activating telomerase is a way to reverse aging in mammals and other organisms. And that's it. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me in the comments below. I'd appreciate if you like and share this video and subscribe to my channel. Bye.